For centuries, Aru pearls have been renowned for their purity and beauty. They are the most precious resource of these remote islands. Kojabi is one of the many small villages of the Aru archipelago in Indonesia. These Moluccan islands lie between the northern coast of Australia and western New Guinea. Kojabi is Babar's village. Agong, a Chinese fisherman and trader, visits Babar regularly to buy his pearl oysters. From September to November, Babar dives for oysters using a traditional ancestral method. Agang fishes for oysters as well, but in a totally different manner. All these oysters are sold to specialized farms where they are operated on. After this delicate operation, they are gathered together and permitted to age peacefully in the water and produce pearls. Only young oysters can produce enough mother of pearl or knacker to create a pearl. In Dobo, the archipelago's main city, the crew of the Success set sail once again. These seasonal divers work for Captain Agong. The men dive many miles from the coast on the Arafura waters in the Indian Ocean. For them, it is always a new and exciting adventure. The success must sail through the several channels which divide the archipelago into six main islands and a hundred or so small landmasses. These maritime canals are uniquely characteristic of the Aru Islands. Contrary to Agong, Babar only has a modest Belon, the traditional Aru archipelago boat, to navigate the meanders of Dobo. The water is shallow and inaccessible to large boats. He fishes for the pearl oyster in the same way his ancestors, the Mujus, did. The Mujus were an ethnic mixture of Malay and Papus. Legend has it that in ancient times when the archipelago was still uninhabited, two men with magical powers came to Pulau Enu, the turtle island, with their families. Sardukai, the black man, came from the east, and Lodukai, the white man, from the west. The black man brought his prized treasure with him, the mother of all pearl oysters. She thus brought wealth to the island and contributed to the harmony of the tribes. Babar and his brother Selit have fished together since childhood. Using barely any equipment, they dive down to 15 meters. They are animists and believe that their ancestors were whales. The whale is their totem. Fishing underwater is dangerous. One must dive a little deeper each day to find the oysters. It often happens that one of the two divers has to come to the rescue of the other when the latter has overestimated his ability. Valuable shellfish are very rare at this depth and several dives are necessary to find pearl oysters.
The success sailed from Dogo two days ago. Captain Agong and his crew have finally reached the fishing site. Due to a lack of skills and money, the diving equipment aboard is outmoded in poor condition and kept to a strict minimum. Simple lead sinkers are used for ballasts and bottles are only filled halfway for fear of explosion. The divers are always at the mercy of an equipment breakdown. The old valves often play tricks on them. The nets used to lay out the oysters are linked to floaters, which permit the boat to spot divers who are drifting with the current. Each diver has his own technique. Some tie a rope to a piece of coral and go around it in search of oysters. Others pull the net behind them. The Indonesians call this area the Lumpur, a favorite spot for pearl oysters. They feed on the plankton in these deep dark waters consisting of algae and coral. Spotting oysters in the sand requires a great deal of experience. Each diver catches an average of six per day. Not all of them, however, are sold to the farms. Fishing for pearl oysters is exhausting work. Hours of continuous diving are necessary. From the boat, Agong nervously watches the buoys, the only contact with the surface. The divers are truly at home underwater, and yet they have had no formal training. Their diving technique is based on stories of accidents which have already taken place, 
caused by diving to great depths without going down gradually and by coming up too quickly. The men are happy. It's been a good day. They found a great number of oysters in this area. The motivation for diving is far more convincing than the risk. They receive 7,000 rupias, about $3 for each pearl oyster. The average annual salary on the Aru archipelago is 80,000 rupias, or about $35 a month. The crew of the success is typical of the diverse population of Aru. Bugi and Makassar Muslims, Chinese Buddhists, Aborigine animists, mixed race Christians, people of all origins and all religions. In spite of their perseverance, Babar and Selit have nothing to show for their day of fishing. They decide to go hunting in the forest of a tiny neighboring island. Centuries ago, Dobo was already receiving merchants from all over the world. In the 17th century, hundreds of Makassar and Bugi boats came to the Aru Islands to trade. These trades involve primarily knacker and pearls. Many local people participated in these profitable exchanges and divers were already risking their lives courageously in the hope of striking it rich. Deer are abundant in these thick mangrove forests. They come to graze in the clearing in late afternoon when the sun is strongest. Babar and Selit must cross immense caves filled with bats and swallows to reach the clearing. Aru is often called the land of a thousand caves. Chinese and Makassar pirates would hide their booty here in the 18th century, the golden age of the Malukas. Babar is the best hunter in his village. Hunting with bows and arrows is very difficult. In this wild region, rifles are almost inexistent. The flesh of the oyster is a special treat. Aboard the success, dinner is being prepared. Only mature oysters which cannot be sold are opened. 
The young oysters will be operated on, since they still secrete mother of pearl as they grow. To supplement their income, the divers will sell the shells in the market. The knacker is used to make buttons. Captain Agong is preparing the next day's fishing. The crew will be diving on the other side of the island. In this lush vegetation, there are 250 different species of birds, including cassowaries and birds of paradise, all sorts of small marsupials, and a wide variety of parrots and magnificent butterflies. Navigating some of the channels is difficult. The water is fairly shallow and the sea bottom is constantly moving. It's hard to avoid getting stuck. The mangrove and channels of the Aru Islands are home to the very dangerous Indo-Pacific crocodile. He is especially threatening to divers, and Babar is always on the alert for them when he fishes. Luck is with Babar today. He is not going to disappoint Captain Agong. He carefully chooses the oysters, taking only the youngest. He knows that the captain is a demanding customer. These three oysters will allow Babar and Salit to buy rice and medicine for their families.
The mother of pearl oysters made the island wealthy and contributed to the harmony of the tribes, but only until the black man borrowed the white man's harpoon and went fishing for the manatee. During the hunt, he lost the harpoon and he lied about it. The white man grew angry and implored the help of the master of the waves. A great tidal wave swallowed up half of the islands and their people, as well as the precious mother of oysters. There was a curse on the archipelago and the tribes were impoverished. The black man, stricken with remorse, went searching for the mother of oysters who had made the islands rich. Riding on a shark, he traveled the sea and found the mother of oysters on the other side of the ocean. He brought her back, and along with her, peace and prosperity. But the souls of the tidal wave's victims are still alive and haunt the ocean depths. Divers today still hear the cries of women and children coming from the bottom of the abyss. The pearl oyster farms first made their appearance on the islands 30 years ago. Japanese, Chinese, and Indonesians share these concessions, but the Japanese are the uncontested masters of this ancestral art. The largest concessions have about 100,000 shells. These farms are like fortresses and jealously guarded. During the season, Agong sells Babar's oysters and those of his crew to the farms. The initial sorting takes place directly on the wooden platform. The farms are very demanding about the quality of the oysters. It's especially important to make certain that those they buy are not sick. Epidemics regularly wipe out the oysters of an entire farm. In the long run, oyster fishing is destined to disappear. A technique has been found for reproducing them in captivity. One day, the divers will no longer embark on the adventure of finding oysters in their natural state. The oysters are first operated on using a top secret technique. It will take two years to produce a pearl. A cargo ship comes once a year to collect the oysters, which will be opened in Japan. In their quest for pearl oysters, the divers perpetuate the legend. The mother of oysters is found again and again, bringing to these islands at the end of the world peace, prosperity, and fertility. <laughs> 